Okay, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for one of my favorite decks, Naya Legends. Y'all know how much I like these legendary decks. They're so much fun to play. You know, we have them built around our legendary sorceries. It's because all the games are kind of different when we're just playing one and two of a bunch of, you know, rare and mythics. Uh, you know, we don't see the same cards all the time. The games don't play out the same all the time. And so it is quite a bit of fun. This is the most aggressive of our Legends decks with the ability to be attacking with Tajik, Legion's Edge, or Captain Lannery Storm on turn two with the help of Llanowar Elves. And going on from there, um, so uh, it has some starts that, you know, can just mo just kind of mow people over and just, uh, you know, when you're having that kind of start, you know, like Lannery Storm on turn two allows you to play you know, like Vivian on turn three, for example, um, or things like that. And and so you can have really fast starts, but then you also have like the card advantage that all the Planeswalkers um, provide. And then we also have these legendary sorceries that just win games on their own, you know, whether you're exiling all of Soltai's permanents or, you know, putting a whole bunch of permanents into play with a big Druidic Vow. It's just a lot of fun to play. And... So let's go ahead and get to the games for some Naya Legends. This is your favorite deck? Yeah, I love this one. And then there's Squee. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. And then... After all that, they're still also Squee. Um, no red mana. Some Petal Grove Temple Garden. But if we just draw a red source, we have a coil, and then we get to play a Karn. I want to just keep. Just draw some lands. These cards are all good. Keep can obviously backfire. But why would it? We got Nia Legends. We got the best sleeves. Am I coiling either of these? Probably need to save my one removal spell for a Benelish Marshal. Come on, fourth land. I have not seen any Gates decks running Glaive of the Guild Pact. No, I've not seen that. Two mana artifact. Creature gets plus one, plus zero for each gate you control and has Vigilance and Menace. Yeah, it's just it's not necessary at all. No, I haven't seen that at all. We have a Domri in here as well. We got two Karns and a Domri. Karn... Uh, overall, I kind of like Karn more. Ooh, I'm I'm happy to see that. I don't want like these things to get tribunal. Domri doesn't have like tons and tons of hits. You know, like you have to you really want to play a lot of creatures for Domri. All right, well now I'm just using my mana. If we would have hit the fourth land, I think I was going to play a Karn and minus two and make a one one to block. Be able to kill, be able to trade with the bodyguard. No, well, yeah, yeah, that was going to be my plan. Yeah, that would have been the best plan. So if we would have drawn a land, that would have been my plan. 
Is that still my plan now? Jeez. We even drew the root, root bound the very first draw. Very first draw. So we've got a real good sideboard here. Um, our cards are make make the noise of our opponent's sleeve. So I should probably take out hmm. probably take out creatures that die to deafening clarion. I played twenty six lands in this deck too. Never drawing lands like that was real unfortunate. Hmm. What four cards do we want to take out? Karn isn't spectacular, but Karn's good at. You know, just playing card and having it survive kind of thing. Let's really see taking out Shauna. More Vivians. Alright, one Vivian. One Tajik, one Shauna. Maybe the other Shauna, too. Because Shauna's pretty weak with the Clarions. Man. If we just know we're going to hit land drops and get to get to be able to blast their 26 land deck blast is our best card in this matchup you know like blast just ends the game on the spot you know like if we cast there's a ruinous blast the game ends so it's like do we keep this hand where we need to draw three lands to be able to win the game we not only have to do that of course we have to have these things we have to have one of those on the battlefield to be able to cast that i think so with having this coil I don't have the coil, I don't think I'm keeping. Like, if the coil is some other expensive thing, I'm mulliganing. I don't know, we just... We have 23 lands still. Just need to draw three lands. In, like, six draw steps. I'll take land war elves also. So that's, like, 27 good draws. That puts it at over half if we count lands and land war elf. That would uh, not be a land or a land world. Rex says he can't keep. Just this card is just it's just game winning. It's kinda hard to mulligan it. We're just not going to draw lands this match, are we? Come on, charge him up. Where's the lands? We need the land. Land. <laughs> Alright, well, we don't get to play Clarion. I guess we have three basic force in the deck. Alright, so there's, there's two lands that did not cast Clarion there.
<laughs> Alright, we gotta charge it up again. Well, this Clarion's gonna be a lot better for us if we get it here this turn. It's certainly gonna be worth waiting. Come on. Come on, deck. Get a land. Uh. Yeah, so there was... As far as drawing lands that cast Clarion go, there were only two that did not. There's two other forests. I love seeing all these lands. Snap keeping every five lander from now on. You get to actually play magic. Can't keep two lander going first with how heavy mana heavy the deck is. Normally I would I would say yes. It's just having a card that wins the game on the spot is Kind of hard to mulligan that. You know, like, winning a game is really, really valuable. It's the most valuable thing. And if we're, if we're like a 24-25 land deck, I also agree that I'm, I don't want to keep a card relying on a 5-mana spell on that. But with the 26 lands, we have a little bit better chance of drawing... Said lands. So they're keeping Llanowar Elf. No, it didn't need runner, runner, runner lands to be functional. It needed that to win the game. But it also, you know, we could miss a land drop. Um, and, you know, like, if we, if our first turn... You know, basically, like, three out of four lands would have been game-winning. But, it, you know, not just functional. The wilds are my shield. A little surprised they used an assassin's trophy so early. Pretty happy about it, though. All right, Maskalar, have have a good night. But you're, but yeah, y'all are probably right. I probably should just mulligan that. Even though it's a difficult mulligan, I should just ha, bite the bullet and do it. I've seen worse. Oh, I should have said no. Now I just put three lands back in because we knew we knew the bottom three cards were all lands. I don't know why I didn't play Temple Garden there. If I didn't, yeah, I should just play the tap the tap land. We can do that next turn though. I don't I don't mind saying yes and shuffling those three lands back in. Ramping when you have Druidic Vow. Pretty important. Alright, do we get to untap with Tristani? Please, untap with Tristani. Pretty, pretty, please. We get to Vow for eight next turn. Come on, opponent. Be nice. Be nice. Pretty, pretty, please let me untap. Just play like a Vivian. There you go. 
It's usually like a game-winning card here, but Meet why don't you do it? Mine. The wild wasn't meant to be contained. We have a lot of haste stuff, so I'm I'm gonna be casting the druidic vow before combat because we have lots of haste things. Opponent's looking at that hostage taker like, well, should I actually? Boom. What do we got? Aurelia, Lyra, Squee, Shauna, couple lands. Okay, okay. Not bad, not bad. Make Tristani a 3-4. Nah, they, they definitely just double block it kind of thing. Druidic Bow is so great. Let's draw another one. We got one more. We didn't see one in, in those eight cards. Let's draw another. Sometimes restoration means retribution. Dinosaur. Did those go extinct? Not quite lethal. Almost. Oh, would it have been lethal? Uh, oh, no, no, because I attacked Lear over here. Yeah, so we would have dealt three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they would have gone to three. <laughs> yeah, now the dinosaur is extinct. <laughs> Squee killed Vivian. Y'all are like, what does Squee do? That's what Squee does. Kills Vivian. So, Krasis for five. Puts the opponent to dead oh no it's vivian kill lyra and then play wild growth walker this is i've lost so much already i won't lose more still dead man legendary sorceries are awesome kamal's druidic vow Versus Runus Blast, those two did not disappoint. Just get seven permanents with one. Exile the entire uh or sorry, exile the opponent's battlefield with the other. So let's get our third blast in here. Rada can come on out. Um We'll grab a couple couple more coils. So take out Blast for Rada. Take out Huatli. I don't know, Huatli's not bad. Basically the flyers are a little rough. So like the flyers are a little rough because of Vivian, as we saw there. And Tristani's a little rough because of finality. But let's get a um, take the squee out. Like, the the Rada and the squee just don't usually get in for damage. Which I guess can be the same same set of, of like, Tajik and Captain Lannery Storm. Yeah, we could see more legendary decks in War of the Spark. I could see that. Hmm. 
Mm. I'm gonna take out a Dawnbringer. I think with bringing in Blast, I think I need to cut a five mana card. And so cutting Dawnbringer as the five mana card, because I think Tristani helps us stabilize a little better if we're behind. Well, earlier we said we couldn't keep a two lander on the play, but what about a one lander on the draw? So that's another mana, but it's not white mana. Oh, well, I probably just can't ditch it. Oh, wait, I'm on the play? I did not expect to be on the play here. I could just cast this Val for one. But yeah, did not expect to be on the play. I guess I could have could have gone to five. There we go. Like getting Amara in play before Tajik. I could just go with the Shauna, but I, I like how Amara can make more bodies here. And I want to get it in play to be able to mentor, you know, attack with it next turn. Not, not a bad one. Let's just fight. Yeah, I guess, yeah, our opponent discarded a Vivian to hand size. And then kept fine finality with no lands. Why is our opponent kept keeping fine finality with no lands? Oh, they're so lucky. Hey, what's up, James? On my noggin. Oh, you're gonna hurt when this is through. So we'd have Val for four right now. I could, I could also just blast right now. And just trade blast plus Lanor Elf for. So Tajik pumps up the Amara, we get to hit him with both of those. We get an extra blocker here to keep Domri safe. And now our opponent's at 10. We got like these two threatening attackers. They're gonna have to kind of sit back. That's good for our Domri. Want to be able to at least vow for five. Want to be able to draw one more land before I'm vowing. Keep getting that manual tap going. Go ahead, tap, 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 tap. There we go. Just tap it in. Can go a long way. 
So this is not that great against finality. I certainly see me myself regretting it. I'm probably just being ugh, just being too too greedy there. Yeah, I'm just being too greedy. Now finality wipes out my board. So when they didn't find the sixth land. I should have just vowed last turn. Me again. I just wanted my opponent to play more stuff before I actually loop. cast the blast. What's up, Karn? Oh, say hello to my little friend. All right, so either Karn or Domri are are dead, one of the two. Which one? I guess I'm, I'm actually gonna have to just waste a blast on this one stupid jade light that just is killing me. Any yeah, Trillix has a good question. Away. Out of the versions what? of the Legend decks, which one do you like the most? So which one do you think is the most fun and which one do you think is the most powerful or competitive? I think the Esper Legends and the Naya Legends are the, the two that are close. Um, they're the two that are... They're the two that I both like the most and think are the most powerful right now. I think, I guess, I would probably go with Naya as the one I like the most and Esper as the most powerful. I've been pretty impressed with Esper Le Legends recently. I just feel like my opponent has a counter spell. Nope, guess not. Are you certain of your decision? If I knew my spell was resolving, I would have been playing Vow last turn. We could have vowed for seven with that treasure. But I threw out the the blast as a test spell. So three, six, seven, eight, nine. And we can vow for eight. You may regret that choice. Hmm. Those have been good cards to get on our vow to vow for eight. All right, Tristani, Land, Land, Lyra, Aurelia. Okay. We'll take those. We'll take those. Not loving where we're at, honestly. It doesn't kill either of those. Actually, never. So, now I like where we're at. I am proud to have fought. You know, I was saying wasn't thrilled as kind of assuming that our opponent was going to be able to kill our Aurelia and Lyra and stuff. 
but they didn't, so. Victory! Alright, one and one. On the comeback trail. Yeah, you can find the Mono Red Crisis deck already up on the YouTube channel. You give me get the YouTube channel a follow over there, and yep, it's already up there. It's just like a Mono Red mid range, uh, splashing for Crisis. You know how there's like the mo Mono like the Jund Mono like the Mono Red that's like Jund that has Chain Whirler with um, Status Statue. It's kind of like that except for with Crisis. Mono white again. All right, so this is what we lost to our first round. So we are going to get some revenge this time. We basically lost because we couldn't ever cast spells either game. We didn't get to actually play magic, and this better not happen again. Our first game, we got stuck on three lands. And this looking like the same thing right here. And uh, speaking of YouTube, I realize that Simic Elves is almost ready to go, so I'm putting that up there right now. Ugh. Oh, DJ Polly B, congratulations! You're gonna be a father, congratulations! All right, there's a land. Yeah, that is really exciting. So, I guess against Mono White Aggro, we don't get any lands. I guess that's the... That's just, like, what happens, I suppose. Man, this should be a pretty good matchup for us. We got a lot of stuff here. Alright, cutting the Karns. And going with this. Do I cut one Druidic Vow? Keep the Shauna in. Let's do that. Yeah, of course, Patrick. That's what I'm here for. And Spare Time Hero getting that gifted stuff from DJ Polly B. Should be the other way around. We need to be gifting DJ Polly B stuff. All right, we got lands. I don't really feel like shocking. You know, we don't have anything to do next turn right now, so I think we'll just play the land war off next turn. Sure, we could draw a three drop here and then feel a little silly, but all right, so all we need to do is we got we got the blast, we got lands. Now we just need to find any legendary creature or planeswalker, and then we're good to go. How would the London Mulligan rule affect Green White Company?
probably not good. I think Green White Company is a deck that is really based on its consistency. You know, you know, in modern, in, in, a, in an inconsistent format, and in, in, in a format in which people are, you know, trying to... Um, find like specific cards early and, and that kind of stuff and uh, they have spell peers uh oh how am I beating the spell peers uh, basically I don't think that's good for green white company I think that, you know, Green White Company basically just wants, like, a mana creature and a three drop, and, you know, like, wh exactly what cards you have are really interchangeable, that kind of stuff. Alright, so I'm going to have to wait a lot longer now. I'm going to have to play around this Spell Pierce. I'm going to have to wait another two turns. So I'm blocking this other 1-1 one, one here. No, I'm taking two extra damage by not blocking Vanguard, but I want that permanent off the battlefield for... Ooh, that's good. For Snubhorn Sentry counts. All right, and that should be game. Yeah, we found lands. I kept <laughs> kept the five land uh, land war off hand. Um, didn't even keep that other spell in hand that we kept. So after this league, whenever it finishes up, which you know, if we lose this match, then this will be the end of the league. Um, I have a bounty for Dick Sporting Goods that I'm going to go ahead and play. It's just a really quick. Um, Uh, real quick like 30 second video and it's you know like the sponsored content from twitch they're called twitch bounties that um, really help help out the stream it's it's good revenue and um, doing this full time it's something that's uh, that you know I'd really appreciate if y'all stick around and get paid by the viewer so I hope y'all stick around and if you do uh, right after we get done with that, um, I have some I have some codes to give away. Well, I have two codes to give away for do I want a lava coil or Amara for Meundies. So I'm going to wait. I'm playing that, so I don't even get to lava coil. So you get so I have two codes for getting a free pair of underwear shipped to you. And so we'll be doing that just giveaway style for everybody. It's not subscriber only. Anybody everybody will be eligible. So I'm going to do that right after the bounty. All right, so just stick around. <laughs> And I just have to watch the 30 second commercial and then talk about it for a couple minutes. I have a couple bullets on it. Bounty is a is a Twitch thing that they have for the Twitch streamers that like some sponsored content, the companies that want to run uh, little advertisements or if the companies like another other parts of bounties are like playing certain games. Um, and so you can also like play yeah play certain play different games and get uh paid for that so they basically help get um, companies 
uh, set up in that respect. I think I just want to gain three life. We don't get to don't get to mentor onto the life linker, but I don't really mind if the life linker dies. <clears throat> If you really want, you know, you can you can mute the stream if you really want um, and everything. But I hope you, hope you all stick around again. Like I said, I'll have a couple giveaways for some coupon codes. Just head on over to MeUndies. You know, really good, really, really good sponsor of the stream that sent me a couple codes to give away. So do that right after the bounty, after this league. But looks like we're going to win this match, so it's not going to be after this match. As we're looking great here with opponent only on the one land. The one land man. They're just a one land band. A one land banjo. And there's the rope. Letting this rope expire completely. All right, Nye Legends going on to two and one though. That's good. Making sure that it, we'll make sure to at least get our entry fee back with the two wins. All right, see you, Tajik. Yeah, Mono Red Krasis is like a Mono Red mid-range deck that splashes for Krasis. Similar to like the... Um, thanks, Sin Christ. Yeah, you can you can check it out on the YouTube channel there. Um, you can see the, the deck and everything. But it worked pretty well. As you can tell there with the 5-1. Yeah, it's just like mono red that that splashes for status statue. It's like the Jund Chain Whirler. It's just Teamer Chain Whirler. Just splash for Krasis. No, just just played four or just played eight the eight red blue lands and the eight red green lands. Um, and then there's also treasure map where you can get the treasures off treasure map to fix your mana as well. All right, going on to match number four. <laughs> MTG bot is slow. There we go. We're facing Urza. <laughs> We're going to be doing the bounty after the league. After we get our second loss. I'm not doing it during the league while we're, you know, making our YouTube video and everything. So just letting people know in case we would have lost that last one. So we'll be doing it after the league. I know y'all are all excited to learn more about baseball season. Their mana creature is bigger than mine. <laughs> this is a real final boss with Urza. Here. Yeah, Oslin, there's a there's a switch you need to toggle to get the traditional constructed to show up. It's around this area of this, this your screen. 
it doesn't look like a like on the main menu it doesn't really look like a switch to toggle it just looks like a logo but it's a switch you need to toggle I would say play Siege Gang Commander over Demanding Dragon. You could also go one and one, go the coward's way out, and just see which one you like more. But I think I think I like Siege Gang more. Doubt our opponent's like actually just mono green, right? But maybe they are. So they're likely gonna have let's bring in this blast. They're likely gonna have like harpooners and crushing canopies and things like that. Vivians or with me just playing that Aurelia Lyra combo. Oh Aurelira. Aurelira combo. Likely going to be really concerned with killing those. So bringing in a couple of removal spells, like bringing in some more coils as well. Cutting a Tristani because I'm bringing in a blast. I, I just don't want any more five. So I guess Tristani is going to be our one that's out, even though I was just talking about how they could maybe kill our flyers because the body may be kind of small. Mike the Mailman with the second month hype. Thanks, Mike. Hope your Rangers are doing well, but go Tigers. Hey, the Tigers have been really impressive to start with. And uh, the Rangers... Man, the Rangers started off good. We were four and two, really five and we were five and two. We beat uh, the Cubs two two games to one, and we beat the Astros two games to one. Won those two series, got the first one against the Angels. The Angels are horrible, so we're five and two. It's looking good, and then the Rangers played no more games after that. Nope, nothing else on the schedule. So it looks like the Rangers are going to finish five and two on the year, and no other games were scheduled whatsoever. So. <laughs> they definitely didn't just lose the other three games to the Angels after giving up 38 home runs to Mike Trout over the weekend. And then also didn't just have a 4-2 to lead in the ninth inning last night against the Diamondbacks in their next game and give up three runs in the ninth to lose 5-4. to And so they definitely haven't lost four in a row. Nope, just no other games have been played. Weird scheduling, but, you know. The Rangers closer is actually Jose Leclerc, who is who's really good. He was awesome the second half of last year. Hadn't given up a run this year. Was, like, lights out all year so far. Just had the, you know, just had a bad out outing this last time, unfortunately. So this is now a, a green-black deck. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's Mike Trout, but I don't know why they just don't walk him all the time. Like, everybody else on the Angels is hitting, like, 180. Their offense is horrible, except for, like, Mike Trout's, like, the best hitter in baseball, even just this year. You know, he's got, like, the best numbers, but the rest of their offense is just horrible. Just, they should just give him, just walk him every single at-bat, and, like, they'd be fine, because nobody else can hit the ball. But Trout hit, like, five home runs, including a grand six home runs in the series yeah just just walk him even when the bases are loaded just just put him on first just get one run in just every at bat just walk walk my trout that's all you have to do the rest nobody else in the lineup can hit the ball just put him on first Ugh. 
frustrating. They were just kept pitching to him. The game's like one to one. Pitch to Mike Trout in like the sixth home run. All right. So then the game's two to one. And you're trying to come back, eighth inning. Still pitching to Mike Trout. He had another home run, so now it's three to one, and you lose three to one. That was Friday. Oh well, enough baseball talk. Speaking of sports talk, though, did get to watch um, last late last night. Watched Dirk's Dirk Nowitzki's last home game as a Maverick. I was shedding many sports tears last night. It was just such an emotional game. And time and uh, Dirk's retiring after 21 amazing years. The most important sports figure ever in the Dallas for Dallas in the history of Dallas. He's just meant everything to the city. Dude, Zerf, we definitely should. Definitely need to go go to some Jays games. Stand down or prepare to die. I'm sorry. Were you using that? The opponent dead yet? No, not yet. So if I, hmm. nah, I can't, can't get, can't play Domri. One mana short of playing Domri and giving Shalai haste. So just gonna play the Domri. Ha! You call it anarchy? For me? It's just another day. <laughs> Please go. Hey, we actually hit two things. Go there. Oh yeah. Dirk was he's just one of the, the best people. Just one of the nicest people. Just not gonna find like, I don't think we're gonna have another athlete like Dirk in my in my lifetime. We'll meet your end soon enough. Oh, Dirk is much more important than Troy Aikman or Emmett Smith or Roger Staubach. Roger's the probably number two. But the the Mavs were just nothing as a franchise before Dirk like they were like they were one of the, the absolute worst franchises in the history of sports before he came or came around like no success ever um, just didn't matter at all <laughs> yeah there's also a, a subscriber with Dirk with a C instead of a K all right three and one that was an easy match Yeah, let's keep it. Let's see how Tajik into Aurelia does for us. Cuban bought the Mavs like shortly after Steve. Yeah, shortly after Steve Nash and um, and Dirk came over. Steve Nash was like 6 1. <clears throat> okay. That guy's a big Dirk fan. I was talking about Dirk. He was like, ooh, Dirk. Playing Tajik because the opponent knows about Tajik. So we'll keep the Lannery Storm secret. Keep it safe. Oh, good draw. And just, again, playing the cards that my opponent knows about. I know we won't, wouldn't be shocking if we 
played the Sun oh, Pelagro, but my opponent choice. knows about Sacred Foundry, so. <laughs> my opponent's probably like, what is going on here with this deck? <laughs> we had, they've seen, so far they've seen Lava Coil, Tajik, Aurelia, Karn, Lyra, and Huali. Uh, basketball ends to like yesterday, today. The the Mavs last game is today. Last night was their last home game. Huge ceremony for Dirk. Plenty of like I know Boo, you just came in. I was just talking about it. Plenty of sports tears. I was crying last night. Um, it was just such an emotional thing. I can no longer stand by and what watch. he's meant to. I'm not ready. The city for of this Dallas yet. and um, just basketball overall. He just changed. He changed the game. I want to kill Teferi, even though we could resolve a Vivian here. I think getting Teferi off the battlefield is important. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, Chris has a combo question. Would Sunder Shaman ability work with Angrath, Captain of Chaos? Angrath gives all my creatures menace, and Shaman states only can be blocked by one creature. Would that make Shaman unblockable? All right, so it can only be blocked by one, but it has Menace. So yes, that would mean it would be unblockable. So yeah, that should work just fine. Yeah. So throw in Dawnbringer into the counterspell. Dawnbringer is our worst card. Our opponent also knows about Dawn, Dawnbringer, but that's our, our worst card out of the hand because Tristani kind of requires... Because, like, Dawnbringer, you only need a Mortify to kill. Tristani, like, needs a Sweeper um, on its own. Ugh. Let's slow this down. We need to move quickly. Well, we'll kind of see how many counter spells they have. I'll we'll just play Karn, I guess. You have another counter? Please no. Ugh. Well, this is bad for us. We could certainly lose this now. I was looking really good. Let's skip to the. But no, that second to fairy. If they just keep countering everything. You don't just have another counter spell right now, do you? No, I can't have another counter spell. Yeah, that's what I thought. Would you like to see what's left of Skull? No one knows the wilds like I do. Hopefully Vivian survives, we get to cast a, a big Kamal's Juridic Vow, and that resolves. So, what's the chances of all that happening? Hurry. Probably not great. think we're going to lose this. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Ooh. Go squee time. I 
They could just not have a counter spell out of those five, right? That could happen. Problem is, Squee doesn't really pressure Teferi enough, I don't think. Or like Tajik does. Eh, let's be real, none of these do. Wow, that resolved really quickly. And these are just all a bunch of lands. Yeah, so I took the land so I could Druidic Vow for more. But didn't work out. That was a really good ramp spell. I think if we draw another vow. We could vow for ten next turn. You know what? I'm not done yet. Alright, so they had no no counter magic, so probably no Kaya's Wrath either. They probably just have one for one removal spells. They're gonna have to try to pick off these things. They probably just have all lands and cast downs. Um dang. Let's do this again. All right, Lannery Storm, Tajik, dang. All right, we have the one Lava Coil that's like our, our one dead card. <laughs> we had that, oh no, the Runus Blast are dead cards. All right, we had three dead cards. So that was kind of unfortunate having those, but man, that, that game was looking great for us. And tell our opponent had that second to ferry there. All right, so Carnage Tyrant in, uh, Cinder Vines in, and the Shauna is also out. Um, I don't think an emblem's an ability as far as Shauna is concerned. Like, can Teferi Emblem exile Shauna that can't be targeted by abilities? I believe Teferi can exile Shauna. That one I'm not 100% on, but I don't, I don't believe that's an ability. All right, King Toll, have a wonderful night. And welcome, everybody. Stop. I wanted to go like this comment that says Hawkeye approves on the mono red deck. It is an ability. Aha, I was wrong. Let's go, Cinder Vines. Yes, I guess Shauna is immune to Teferi Emblem. It's not like our opponent didn't have any other way to remove Shauna from the battlefield, but that one would not have worked. So remember, y'all, if we do lose this, we're going to be taking just a couple minutes to uh, do a Twitch bounty where we play an advertisement for um, a 30-second advertisement for Dick Sporting Goods Baseball and talk about that for just a little bit. And then after that, for sticking around, I'll be doing a giveaway with codes from wonderful sponsor, Neon Dees. 
you can get a free pair of their underwear, which is incredibly comfortable, sent to you. So Wild stick around I through like. that. People, not so much. That's what we'll have after this league if we lose. So <clears throat> after this match if we lose or after the final boss whenever we win. Like where we're at here. Go, Vivian, go. Shocking Balance in there, so they have comes. precognitive perception, probably. <laughs> A lot of peas. Precognitive perception, probably. So I know I could play Carnage Tyrant and not have it get countered, but... I think I do kind of want my opponent to, like... I do want to incentivize my opponent to counter stuff and not play cards like Chemister's Insight or Precognitive Perception. Well, the while Vivian is you going to ultimate here in a little nature. bit. And I do like... I would really like to, like, if we ultimate Vivian and then have Carnage Tyrant, the game's over, right? I guess they can tuck. No, they can't tuck. Yeah. Yeah, the game's just over. Because Carnage Tyrant would be indestructible then. Go, Squee, go. Squee. There you go, BMV. That's smart. Yeah, I guess, yeah, they would need four Cry of the Carnariums. Why just play that main phase? VT log. Nature brings your reckoning. Thank you so much for resubbing their VT log. I probably don't even need to show my opponent. Carnage Tyrant? I mean, of course we can cast Carnage Tyrant here. Alright, sub battle countdown down to 58. Oh, that's true. Thought Erasure. Thought Erasure would be annoying. I guess sell the wreckage. Dang it. Once you actually click on that, I can't I couldn't click back, so I guess we're priced into playing the land world. Yeah, we'll see. Does the opponent have the four Cry of the Carnariums? Or the Settle? No. Sorry, Hawkeye.
No, our creatures were indestructible, so cleansing Nova didn't do anything. Yeah, it's a vigilant, trample, uncounterable, hexproof, indestructible dinosaur. With vigilance, too. Oh, yeah, you, you said vigilant. Okay. Give me some more lands. Not a land. It's close. That's a land. I'll take that one. That one cast a Jeek. All right, give us more lands. There we go. Two more lands. Almost there. Hey, what's up, Philly Phil? There we go. Is that gonna get no, no mortify. Oh, thanks, Philly Phil. Thanks for the kind words. Yeah, glad you're watching. And glad you're here. Correct, Leecher, but we're talking about, or, I don't know. Yeah, never mind. All right, attack. So if our opponent would have killed the Aurelia, we would have just played the backup one. They did not, so we're good to go here. Ah, Jelly's gifting the sub to Philly Phil. Philly Phil, hope you enjoy your emotes. Where's my hype boats? There we go. Get some hype. Thank you so much, Jelly. I think I just kind of keep on attacking my opponent until they do something about it. Doesn't really seem like they want to do anything about it. I, I do have, like, spells to waste, but maybe they're relying on, like, the four life from an absorb, for example. Doesn't seem like they have an absorb for how that auto tap worked out right Reverse. there, though. It's probably negate. This is hardly my worst defeat. Really, I wasn't quite lifelink, so I'm just gonna have the Shalai in play. So it's likely negate in hand. So this forces a Wrath, and then Carnage Tyrant would also force a Wrath. And they have three cards. But I guess we wouldn't be able to play Carnage Tyrant next turn because we weren't drawing a land because they were really a... But anyway, Nia Legends still coming back, and we are... Ooh, not that, not that good. Not, no. Four and one. There we go. Four and one, which means... Final boss time. We are undefeated against final boss tonight. Took it down earlier. Let's get in the zone. Auto zone. Yeah, that was a that was a tough land war off there. You know, you usually see the three three land war elves. 
<laughs> what happens when we have Feather and Beam Spitter Mage out? Oh man, I don't even know. Maybe somebody else in chat knows. I don't know. Probably something crazy. Love it, love all the final boss emotes in the chat. Ooh. Let's squeeze them. Let's go, squee. Go, go, squee. No, we can handle squee. That's like a toy or something like that in his hand, right? I thought it was like a skull, but isn't it? I think y'all were saying it was like something else. Dude, right? Final Fantasy VII, such a great game. Yeah, we saw the, yeah, saw the boar. The legendary boar that was spoiled today. Yeah, it was really good. It's a little squeeze toy. Hey, hairless bear. Gates. This is a matchup for Urza's Ruinous Blast. We definitely want to blast away a bunch of rams and uh, eight eights. The artifacts and the rams and their art, their enchantment even. Ilharg. Ilharg the Razebor. It's just like we have like this uh, this set of like um, you know all this war going on you know, War of the Spark this epic battle between all these planeswalkers Nicol Bolas all this stuff and then there's just suddenly a so blast is perfect. I think I want to Vivian read first. Let's kill this. It's only there's just like this boar god. Every like what's what's this boar god the doing? Wrath of Scala. Like what? <laughs> like that's like out of left field there. Like what is this? Just like where's that from the story? What the, this. Ooh, hostage taker. That's not something you see very often. Do I need to just blast away the hostage taker here? No one knows the wilds like I do. I guess. I don't really want to use this yet. Yeah, guess so. Okay, so there is a gruel legend that the boar god would come back and wreck a Ragnarosh-ish thing. What's a Ragnarosh-ish thing? What can we vow for? One, two, three, four, five...
come to me. Ragnarok means end of days. Hmm. How do you wreck a Ragnarok ish thing? Then, how do you wreck a end of days? I don't know, it's just gonna come down and cause it, I guess. A porcalypse? Oh man. No, there another Urza's Ruinous Blast. That card's good. Play the Tajik. Gosh. Not Being bad. Real punished. For a mouse. I don't know about that punish. We have another Vivian. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I want this thing to start making treasures. So we have more mana for this other druidic bow. How did you can't stop nature? Yeah, boar god dies to removal. You just have a cast down. Oh no, no it's legendary, obviously. Never mind, not cast down, but mortify. I am not going to sit this one out. No time for a Yeah, that's true. It doesn't die completely. Goes to your library. The wilds are my shield. So now we have the Shalai Tajik combo. I really should have seen that coming. I mean, our opponent's playing pretty Esper. I could certainly see them. I'm gonna save her really. I could certainly see them just having Kaya's Wrath. But Gates of Blaze won't do it anymore. Settle doesn't matter because of Shalai. Right, so we got we got Settle covered. Want that two mana for for negate? Comes. Oh, we got like negate over there. All right, get that out of their hand. I don't know how to negate for the big druidic bow. So they have to have like a Kaya's Wrath plus Vras's Contempt. So there's a contempt for that thing. So do they have another contempt over here for Vivian? Nope. All 
All right, so we got game one against Esper Gates Control. Blast, Cinder Vines, Knight, Coil out, Dawnbringer out, 62. Do 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 do. Nineteen creatures, it's so not very many for Domri. Mm. Yeah, Shauna should probably come out. I guess Dombringers could be pretty important at racing like the eight eights. Wally great. kind of weird it's like i'd like to play carnage tyrant but I, against like against esper control i want to play carnage tyrant but against gates i don't want to play carnage tyrant same like urza's ruinous blast i wouldn't want that card at all like blast is like horrible against esper control but it's amazing against gates So we're up a game on the final boss here. Hmm. It's not perfect, but Cindervines to Jeek Shalai. Certainly love those cards. Love our love our our cards in our hand. Just don't love our mana base. Uh, it's not just Gate Splash to Fairy because they played multiple Contempts that first game, and like I think they played Absorb. I think. Yeah, I, they may not have green. I think this is like Esper... I think this, this is basically like Esper Splash, Guild Summit, Gates of Blaze, and the 8-8. Eight eight. I don't think they have green. That one's legendary. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So I don't have like the two white sources to be able to play Tajik and Shauna. So just getting the attacks in. And I, I want to play Tajik because of uh, Gates of Blaze. I want to like make sure that my other creatures besides Tajik are protected from Gates of Blaze. I play Lannery Storm, get attack for six, or I play Shalai and I attack for two, but they're like dead next turn. If I, if I play Lannery Storm, I guess I'd probably want to hit for five, I'd probably want to leave the treasure. But still, Gates of Blaze next turn would be really bad where 
Gates of Blaze isn't as bad because we get the follow-up Lannery Storm. That game? Three, five, six, seven, eight, plus the treasure we could do nine. That is game. Set. Match. And the final boss has been defeated. We are five and one. Five win dream. We got there and a mythic. Get those extra gems. So Nia Legends. Even after the rough start where we lost our first round against Mono White, which I think is an, a really great matchup for us with having three Clarion and three Urza's Ruinous Blast. I think Mono White's an awesome matchup for us. I think we're going to win most of the time. But we had three land one game and two land the other game. We just couldn't actually play our spells. So that's how our first loss happened. And so it was looking kind of shaky. But then we won five in a row after that because our deck is awesome and legendary. And yeah, it's just just a really good deck, and it's a lot of fun. And we saw there the these cards like Captain Lannery Storm and Tajik Legion's Edge do a whole lot for this deck, and they're really impressive, especially with with Lana War Elves, where you can have them on turn two sometimes. But they just they're just kind of good, and they're just kind of thorns in the opponent's side, where they're just like taking this extra haste damage, and uh, before you know it, they're dead. And we got that backed up by the the good card advantage with the Planeswalkers and everything, and Kamal's Juridic Vow doing its thing. Or is Runus Blast of course is the all-star. But Alright, so that's Nia Legends. Impressive showing. Got the five wins there. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But thanks for watching some Nia Legends, and I'll see you for the next video.